This is an explanation of using TS and pH diagrams and what some of the advantages of them are and what different steps look like on a diagram. So let's start with the TS diagram where I've indicated the saturated liquid region. It's important that this is the saturated liquid line. That's the saturated vapor line. So out here, this region liquid, out here vapor Again, the critical point. So one of the advantages of this particular diagram is looking at, for example, an adiabatic reversible process from here to here. So, so this might be start point one, point two, and what we're looking at then is an adiabatic reversible process. So adiabatic and reversible, delta S is zero. So a constant entropy process is very easy to represent on this diagram. If we start with superheated steam, this is above the saturation temperature, and we go to a vapor-liquid mixture, something that has a quality less than one. Some linear combination of this liquid phase and that vapor phase at a given temperature and, of course, a given pressure. I'm going to remove this so we can look at if we carry out a process that's irreversible, so remember this, this is a representative of a, of a turbine. We expand a gas, we remove energy so the temperature goes down, we're taking out enthalpy and converting it to work, and the process then work equals delta H because it's a flow process, it's steady state, and it's adiabatic. And so we start with the superheated steam and we have an irreversible process since there's still no heat transfer. That means the entropy must increase for the gas. So, so this now is the irreversible process. When we look at the irreversible process, we, we end up at a different Point. It doesn't have to be on the saturated line, but what we see is that the entropy for the irreversible process is greater than the entropy for the reversible process, right? The final entropy, so point, so the final value. And just looking at the diagram for the irreversible process right here, we have saturated steam. Here we have a mixture of liquid and vapor, mostly vapor, but just from our knowledge of vapor-liquid equilibrium enthalpies of vaporization, we also can say the enthalpy at the final point for the irreversible process is greater than the enthalpy for the reversible process. And the reason we can say that is just from looking at the diagram and knowing the enthalpy of a saturated steam at the same pressure, same temperature as a mixture of liquid and vapor, the enthalpy of the saturated steam is higher. And since the entropy is higher, the absolute value of delta H for their irreversible is less than the absolute value for the reversible. So the work for the irreversible is less than the work for the reversible. So let's look at another type process on a TS diagram. And so what I'm drawing in this lower diagram is a constant pressure process. So we know in the region going from liquid to vapor at constant temperature, we must be at constant pressure. Phase rule tells us that we know there's unique saturation and pressure for a given temperature. And then once we've reached saturated vapor, if we want to increase the temperature, constant pressure, then we're increasing the entropy. Right? We're allowing more energy levels available. If it were an ideal gas out here, we calculate the entropy change Cp log of T2 over T1. Of course, if Cp is constant, this equation is actually liquid or gases. See, it doesn't have to be an ideal gas for, for that to be true. So we know as we increase the temperature, the entropy increases. And so we've approximately drawn this line in that format. Higher temperature corresponds to a higher pressure. So if this is P1, this is P2, P2 is greater than P1. And again, we expect some behavior like so. So this shows the behavior for couple processes on TS diagrams. Now let's look at pH diagrams. So on a pH diagram we have the same two curves that form the envelope for the two-phase region. We have saturated liquid, the green line, saturated vapor, the blue line. Notice the shape is different. 
The constant enthalpy process actually looks quite different from what we might expect if we didn't have this diagram. In other words, enthalpy depends on both pressure and temperature. But let's look at the same process that we looked at a turbine. So we're looking at the reversible case. So we know we're losing energy as a gas moves through the turbine, may convert to a gas-liquid mixture. We start at some point that's high pressure, high temperature gas, and then as we saw on the previous diagram, we move into two-phase region. Right? So again, a constant pressure line must be a constant temperature line, but clearly temperature at one is much higher than temperature at two. We're losing enthalpy as we lower the pressure, and so, so we can use some understanding of processes to visualize what a given process looks like on this diagram. We could also think about a process, so let's look at something that we start out here, and say we go to here. If that were a constant entropy line, then what we would expect to happen? We're lowering the pressure. Lowering the pressure for a gas, we expect the entropy to increase. So we lower the pressure, we expect the entropy to increase. But we're also lowering the enthalpy from 1 to 2. So lowering the enthalpy for gas means we're lowering the temperature, and so therefore lowering the temperature, we expect the entropy to decrease. The combination of these two, the pressure is decreasing but the temperature is decreasing such that delta S is zero. And, and so we, we can use that type of reasoning to visualize different steps on these diagrams. So for example, having a gas flow through a throttle, the pH diagram may be the perfect diagram to visualize the process. So if we can imagine we start here, it goes through a throttle, it must be a constant enthalpy. So letting the pressure drop from a high value to a low value, well this is a throttle, delta H is zero, final pressure is lower than initial pressure. But what does the diagram also tell us in the two-phase region? The final temperature is lower than the initial temperature and we're in the two-phase region. So this particular behavior actually is, is very important. In, in refrigeration vapor compression cycles. We start with a high pressure liquid at point one, we expand it through a throttle to low pressure, and we drop the temperature significantly. So now we have a low temperature that we want to use in a refrigerator. All right, so this is the low temperature, this is for the freezer in your refrigerator. So picking the right diagram makes it easier to visualize the, the processes that occur.